snow as the week. Uh, <laughs> there is no formal agenda tonight. Uh, so what we're looking to do, the reason we have this is so that we get a chance to listen. Sometimes in our select board meetings, we have so many other items on the agenda. Uh, I have to be the person that says, keep to your three minutes. Uh, so that's why we have these types of special engagements so that we don't necessarily have, uh, uh, you know, we have a little bit more time. Uh, I will ask, uh, just because it's my job to maintain uh, the, the meeting and moderate, I will ask that if, if, we, if we feel like you have said your piece, to maybe try to keep it between three and four minutes, um, just so in case anybody else wants to speak, we have friends uh, joining us on Zoom. And I also have some email uh, comments that have been asked to be read this evening as well. Um, so that's, that's basically the way we want to do this. Like Eric said, we're going to take some notes. We're recording the Zoom, uh, and the next uh, select board meeting that we have with the entire select board is on Monday. Um, so our hope is to be able to, ch uh, to sort of uh, share some of this uh, information uh, that we get tonight with the entire select board. Welcome, to um, Back with the studios back there. If you need a water or something like that, please grab yourself some. Uh, but first, uh, do you guys have any questions? Anything like that about the evening? Otherwise, what I might do is ask uh, if we have anyone on Zoom uh, that would like to um, start. If you are on Zoom and there's uh, anything that you would like to say, you could either unmute and just sort of uh, politely butt in. Uh, you can certainly raise your hand or anything like that, but it looks like we have four people online. Um, uh, if you uh, if you have anything to say on the Zoom, uh, we'll send that to you right now. Judy, Judy unmuted. Um, yeah. Casey, oh, and Andy's got his hand up or Casey? No, no, that's just uh, Casey. I believe. Casey, if you want to unmute. No, I apologize. I was trying to just deal with my muting and unmuting. So. Okay. Yes, you got it. Okay. No worries at all. You I only it. do this like 15 times a day for work, but sorry about that. <laughs> right. Well, every day is a new experience. So uh, thank you very much. If not, then we'll turn it over. If anyone in the audience uh, would like to address, we do ask that you, uh, when you step to the podium, uh, if you're a refill resident, make sure you say uh, uh, just your name and where you are for the record, uh, where you live. Okay. Thank you. You guys Somebody's got to start, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. All right, Patrick, we'll start. All right, sure. <laughs> so good evening. Thank you for your time this evening. Patrick Coleman, 468. So uh, Eric graciously, you know, met with us so we could, you know, share our thoughts and concerns regarding vote more and, uh, and the Reedfield boat launch area of, of the lake. And we all know what transpired in Winthrop, which got us all thinking, should we do something proactively before we let it get out of hand? Um, and the, uh, the thought here was, let's bring it forward in the interest of the residents and the users of the lake so that Reedfield is in a position where it has some type of ordinance in place so that it doesn't get out of hand like it did in Winthrop when it was 25, 27, 28 votes, you know, all, you know, more than the same area. And I know the state of Maine does have um, some regulations or guidelines, but for inland waters, if you go on their website, they don't regulate, they uh, refer, uh, you know, people to the town for local ordinances regarding more place, placement. So, uh, that's why we brought this forward to be proactive um, and knowing that this is going to take time and making sure that, you know, we, we feel doesn't get the position where they have to do something reactively uh, versus proactive. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, absolutely. Go right ahead. State your name and where you live, sir. We stand on the Route 41 Reedfield. I'm one of the guys that you guys <coughs> sorry about that, but I'm one of the voters in the call. No, um, no, no. They just don't want you here. Good news for the folks is that the numbers, none of the voters have moved. 
Uh, there's never been more than 14 warrants in the cold period. And it's still in winter. Yeah, in winter. Yeah, in winter. winter. There's never been more than 14 warrants. There's never been more than 12 votes. Two of those 12 votes were from folks who were on vacation. Okay. Put, a, put a more in there. And frankly, they've left it the actually in two mornings, which, by the way, the mornings themselves weren't spec. They weren't proper mornings. Excuse me, cement drop with a chain and a rope and board. a board. Having said that, <clears throat> I can tell you that I represent the existing boats and moorings that are down the map. I'm the only Reedfield resident, by the way, who moors in winter. Uh, so that can tell you that there's not a great deal of interest in coming up here. Uh, and I have checked with my fellow boaters, and they, like myself, really don't want to come up to Reedfield because it's too far away. <laughs> um, they could take two more boats down there because of possibly the doubts of Hannafin, so we go into gas. In my case, I have several properties in Winter, so I'm going to check with my tenants or take care of a problem. How are you by <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, So coming this way doesn't make it. The other reason we wouldn't want to move here, especially by the, by the state we have, is it's a state landing. And whoever's going by there when there's a vast tournament, mm -hmm. you, you can't and move. Imagine trying to pull a boat in or out or get to a moor. The more you get because of the uh, rocks that are out by the uh, state land, you might have to go out 150, 200 feet before you can safely moor anything. Do you think I want to moor a $30,000 fox in the boat? In that type of situation, not because anybody else. I only know of one, and maybe, maybe the Eric, you might know. I only know of one boat that has moored suspiciously. I believe it on its live boat, and the end is the bit as a getaway captain. I mean, to, um, I think it's not often. And I, I personally would like to know if anybody has anybody here seen or had a boat more than firm to a property? I mean, because if you have, keep in mind that it has to be more than 20 feet from your high water. So if you have a high water mark, it has to be minimum of 20 feet. So I can't be any close. The town can legislate or ordinance, if you will. Up to 200 feet in shore. Enforcing that? No. You go by the neutral person, you see that that boat's still there. Not neutral. Um, enforcing it is very difficult. It's difficult because of private certification. Uh, anybody who wants to turn to look outside of the that is the water, you know, the water act. It requires enforcement. By Congress. A CO, sorry about this, but I put that in. A CO can enforce through a Harvard master. A CO can become a Harvard master by going through the one year process and three tests. He doesn't want to. Mark doesn't want to remember. And most of you don't want to. They have to fill the so that means you've got to go out and hire. Uh, I'm, I'm over time. You tell me to. You wrap it right up, Lee. We know where you're coming from. Hire somebody. Let me sell this $50,000. Plus a boat, plus a trailer, plus a tow vehicle, gas card, and sometimes an assistant. Be careful. Right now, we don't have this sufficient. Don't know why we need to. Pick something that ain't broken. Right? <laughs> right now, nobody wants to do it. And nobody wants to do it. So, with that said, I'm here. If you have any questions, ask Dennis.
and then you can ask me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lee. Um, I, I thought I'd uh, take a moment to read a submitted letter uh, from a uh, citizen of Reed Field that actually lives on the water. Uh, and again, to do this, I feel like I should stand up because I hate not to. Um, this is from Greg Durbin. Uh, I am Greg Durbin. I am out of town today, but I wanted to offer my thoughts on the issue. My address is 104 Winthrop Road here in town, right next to the public beach, uh, public boat launch. I attended the first meeting Eric held with members of the Two Set Point Road Association to listen to their suggestions. What struck me at the meeting was from the several who spoke is they had made investments in buying shorefront property and did not want to see a flotilla a marina of boats clustered around the boat launch. I did not hear much concern for safety, et cetera. My wife and I have lived at our location for 46 years, and there has never been any kind of marina set up in that area. For the past several years, the most I have seen were a couple of boats moored away from the launch area. And as recently as the past three years, one boat owned by a year-round refilled resident. Meanwhile, I have seen boats, docks, and swim floats spring up in front of most of the taxpayer residents' property along both shores adjacent to the boat launch. I guess my question is, does the town have any kind of responsibility to protect somebody's view across Moranacook Lake? I think the issue could be right for causing dissension and divide among residents. Do we want that? Thanks for listening, Greg Durk. That is in the record. Um, anyone else? The podium is yours. I wanted to hear from other people first. But there go. Yeah, you are the person. I know it's a little bit awkward, but if you could speak towards um, the microphone. Yeah, talk to the owl. Talk to the microphone. Yes, thank you. Uh, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be able to hear me from behind. I hope so. Speak up from you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, My name is Wendy Dennis. Oh, I'm a limnologist with the Papasi Watershed District. I hope I can provide some useful information and perspective. I am not an expert on harbor masters or mooring, but Papasi Watershed District does spend time on the lakes and does work with multiple towns and lake associations. So I'm going to be talking about harbor masters not just mooring ordinances. Harbor Master could be beneficial on several of the lakes in the Cobbesy Watershed District. It seems worth considering, not asking for any specific action, just except considering uh, if you wish to. Uh, and, and why might it be worth considering? We've seen increased boating activity larger boats, more and bigger waves, some erratic boating behavior. Um, this is not just in Reed Field, this is throughout the district on other lakes as well. Um, jet skis traveling fast through areas that are thick and rich with plants. So the result of some of these actions are shoreline erosion, loss of shoreline recreational use, safety both in the open water and near shore, plants being torn apart and uprooted and washing onto shore elsewhere. So specifically, excessive waves at the shoreline uh, from boaters disregarding the no wave speed zone uh, where that's appropriate and from larger waves from wake boats that make swimming, kayaking and canoeing less safe. We have some large high energy waves cause shoreline erosion. And this potential increases with larger waves such as from wake boats. So the current 200 feet from shore regulation where it's supposed to go at just headway speed only. Um, it's insufficient for wake boats. You need more than twice that distance to cut the wave energy to make it sane. So these are just some things we've been discussing with people throughout the district and in-house and just, you know, what's the best way to handle um, some of these things. Um, and a harbor master may come into play. A harbor master can educate boaters about boating rules and about the impact improper use can have. Now, not everyone responds to education, that's for sure, but some will. And a harbor master really can do something that um, 
maybe the rest of us don't want to do lake associations and and shorefront property owners um, they might be comfortable disseminating information but not really comfortable approaching friends or strangers and uh, talking about that and asking them to change their behavior a harbor master could do that um, we'll be doing that you know regularly and it would be an appropriate um, person to do that a harbor master can also enforce ordinances and laws uh, for example, uh, a harbor master can be the backup for courtesy boat inspectors and invasive aquatic plants. A town could adopt an ordinance uh, requiring invasive aquatic plant inspections at private launches, and the harbor master could enforce that. A harbor master can enforce voter safety laws, um, you know, from simple things like you have enough life jackets on board to reckless boating. Um, if a town decides to authorize their harbor master to do so. I mean, there are some laws that would still require a game warden. Uh, for example, drunk boating. A, a harbor master can get a drunk boat driver off the lake, but you still need a game warden to process that violation. But it, it's one step in between. So, but a harbor master could just be educational without enforcement. Uh, state law spells out what harbor masters are allowed to do. And then towns can decide which of those tasks they actually want to authorize their harbor master to perform. If the town had a mooring ordinance, the harbor master could enforce that. So we'll talk a little bit about mooring ordinances. Uh, most people know that Winter passed a mooring ordinance this year, and it's townwide for all lakes. It's in, it includes Morantic Lake, but it's not limited to Morantic. It requires shorefront ownership for mooring a boat. It allows one mooring for 50 feet of shorefront ownership. Winthrop has hired a mooring officer to enforce this. It'll be seasonal, part-time, primarily complaint, responding to complaints rather than you know, riding around the lake searching for violators. Um, Violators are issued a citation with a deadline for compliance. And state law sets a range of fines allowable for days of non-compliance. Um, roughly a dozen or so citations have been issued so far throughout the town of Winthrop on various lakes. At the moment, there are six on Moran Cook who have not yet complied, and one on another lake. I believe it's policy. The ordinance has only been in effect for five months. Some people do not like it at all, and others are openly thankful for it. I'm basing that on um, not just things that I've heard, because I really, you know, not hearing a lot about it, but um, based on people coming into the Winter Town Office and what they're expressing there. But more ordinances can be tailored to each town, regardless of what Winters look like, I and mean, you can have. More fields can be allowed, they can be regulated under an ordinance or not allowed. Moorings can be allowed in front of a right of way to a lake or not. Existing moorings can be grandfathered or not. So there's a lot of things to think about if you're going to draft an ordinance as to just what you want it to look like. There's flexibility there. So basically, I would recommend reading. Um, Harbor master and mooring ordinances that have been enacted in other towns in Maine. And even more importantly, talking with the towns as to what their experience has been. For example, Belgrade, Naples, Harrison, Winter. Um, I have heard that Naples, the town of Naples has had their ordinance for a while, and I don't recall how many years, but they've been very education focused. And uh, they felt that he's created a the harbor master has created a presence and done a lot of valuable outreach. After several years, they've just recently added enforcement duties to their harbor master's tasks because engaging a game warden frequently is not realistic. I was told that adding the enforcement has really helped, uh, not for the mooring part. Um, there's there's one lake there that has 1,500 moorings, but mostly for boating activity where the harbor master has been helpful. 
Uh, Winthrop is considered hiring a harbor master. They budgeted $25,000 for it this year, but they haven't taken any other action on it. Uh, in other words, no additional ordinances or no duties defined for harbor master. So currently there's just the mooring officer. Uh, they had anticipated an eventual regional cooperation uh, with a shared harbor master with Manchester, possibly Reedfield. I'd say that idea is treading water at the moment, uh, but uh, some feel that it's worth pursuing further. And then Belgrade has a harbor master, was actually their co enforcement officer, uh, for enforcing its mooring ordinance. And that ordinance, like Winthrop, it allows one mooring for every 50 feet of shorefront. It prohibits property owners from allowing guests to moor overnight. There are no moorings beyond 200 feet. But the harbor master mentioned some issues that the mooring ordinance does not address. Uh, some people in Belgrade are complaining that because non shorefront owners are mooring offshore, multiple boats are rafting together and partying, and then they're coming in and uh, to properties, seasonal properties when the seasonal owners aren't there. But mostly he says it, it's missing, the mooring ordinance should deal with dock issues because that's what uh, he's had a lot more complaints about and issues to deal with. Um, for example, there's been a, a strange number of um, people placing their docks diagonally into the space of their neighbor. Um, and he says, fortunately, um, everyone that he's asked to move the dogs back to right in front of their property has voluntarily complied, which is a good thing because he doesn't have the power to enforce it. He could if the ordinance said that. But I just gave out those examples to show that this can be done in many ways if you decide that there are some issues that, that need to be addressed. And it's probably wise to take some time to do some research. And I think you mentioned that you want to take time to do it. Um, so you can give that a minute. And to gather it's the data from other towns' experiences. So that's what I have, and I'm interested in hearing what other people have to say. Thank, Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Judy, if you're at home, go ahead and mute for us, if you don't mind. We see you there, Judy Beck. Thank you. Um, anybody else wants to step up to the podium and address the group? You certainly can. Or Eric, will you mute? Thank yeah, you so yeah, much. Sure. Appreciate it. Well, Come on sure up. Yeah, right. absolutely. Just uh, say your name, where you live. I am Jean Wagner, and I live on Tucson Point Road. And listening to, I believe it's Wendy, yes. um, one of the things between listening to her and talking to my neighbors um, that we really, our thought was more around the state boat launch in Rainfield restricting a small area there so that people can get in and out. Back in, I think it was the late spring, there was a boat there that was moored, that broke off of its mooring and was heading into the dock with one of our neighbors. So that's really where this started to come from. And I think most of the people on our street are more looking to restrict that area. You know, if people wanted to take it broader, that's fine, but that's not really why we came forward and started talking to um, Eric is the town manager. It was really to keep that area from becoming constricted. And even though I agree that um, people may not want to come all the way to Reedfield and they have it, but if they no longer can do it in winter, the concern is people would move their boats to Reedfield. And then at that point, we'd end up in a, in a situation where it could become contentious. Whereas if we did it before people got established, we wouldn't have that as, a, as an issue. Yes. Um, so, and that was it. I just wanted to. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, that's a good point of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's a hot little area there that that is is also part of the discussion. Lee, yeah, just just to answer. Yeah, pop up here, buddy. Just Thank just you. Answer. Um, <laughs> you know where I'm stopping. Um, <laughs> they're not. Boats won't come. Boats that are coming, I can't talk for everyone, obviously, but the boats that are coming, the boaters that I represent, the motors that I represent, won't come to the area. There's a chat. Yeah. We're, we're, we don't want to, we want to leave our boats pretty much where they are. I own a 
I'm stockholder of CSX, which is the railroad company that now owns the, the tracks. Hey, uh, Lee, we have a comment here yes. for you yes. to speak forward. I am so sorry. That's okay. All you have to do is According talk to, to the wife, owl. I'm too loud now. Well, <laughs> right there to the owl. Talk to the owl. Don't so, talk to Jean. She can so, hear you. So the bottom line is um, the voters will not be coming to refuel. There isn't a place that I think they a find comfortable, b a reason for them to come to um, to refuel. The other thing is I want to address the Lake Association later. Um, we feel by leaving our boats in the water that um, they're not being put in any other body of water. Marina Cook Lake is free of no foil, and we want to keep it that way. And so our boats not going in and out, in and out, in and out, and maybe to other bodies of water help to keep Marinica free of no foil. Uh, and yes, the, I recognize that. Uh, and and right. the voters that I represent, uh, and there are approximately 12 of them, um, they're they're more than willing to work with anybody, including the town. We've asked for a mooring field. Uh, and I wish the town would have talked to us about that. Uh, enforcement, I do want to let you know about enforcement. Enforcement has to be done by someone who's Title 25. Title 25 requires them to go through at least the, uh, at least part of the 18th uh, week uh, course up at the Criminal uh, Justice Academy and become a certified Title 25 or uh, police officer or constable, some of that nature. Uh, one of the problems with our COOs is they, they really don't want to do that. So um, it, it's an expensive proposition again. But trust me when I tell you that if a boat breaks off of a mooring, any mooring, it is the responsibility of, of not just the boat owner, but that boat becomes what is known as in peril. And it's the responsibility of anybody that sees it to do whatever they can, uh, especially if there's anybody on it. This person is trying to on it. It's not free to be Yeah. So thank you, Lee. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. 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 We'll get you back up there. Um, hello, if you are just joining us online, um, if you would like to uh, have a comment or say something to us, you can unmute and address the group. Is the hand your mouse, Eric? It's, yes. it's my mouse. Yeah. Mouse, so I think the hand is the mouse. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hearing no yeah. Zooms. Um, would anyone else like to join us? Absolutely, sir. Please state Hi. your name so I can. Chris Regan, yeah. uh, Two Set Point Road. Um, so I, I think I just want to concur with some of the points that Gene and um, Pat made earlier. Um, we did come to Eric earlier in the year um, with a concern about the area around the wall, the mm -hmm. boat yeah. um, We are not pushing for a broad-based regulation of moorings of, of across the entire lake gotcha. um, in Reed Field and, and regulating everybody's moorings. We are really just concerned about um, with the with the Winthrop regulation, people deciding to moor um, down here. Yeah. Lee, I really respect what you're saying, and it makes me feel good <laughs> that the folks that you're saying that you know today that are mooring up there um, don't want to moor down here. I can't speak for those that are not here. You know? Okay, right. Well, that's, so that's my point. So um, it's great to know that these 12 people don't want to be down here. We're, so then I'm not concerned about the, you or the 12 people, of your, your 12 friends. We're concerned, we, we have invested. We have invested in these properties. We pay a lot in tax. Absolutely. And we're worried about the next 20 years. We're not worrying about what's happening you know, in the next year or two. We've actually had this conversation. It's, it's been going on for a couple of years. Um, it's picked up more recently, but we're looking long-term. So we're concerned about what the long-term impact could be. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're not really concerned about your 12 friends. So, okay. all right, I, I just wanted to know that. Mm -hmm. um, and and if, if those people don't want to be down here, 
that also makes me feel better that if we put an ordinance in place, they're not going to be protesting the ordinance, right? Because they don't want to be here anyway, so we're not going to upset people down that are currently in Winthrop that we think I might. would be a, would be upset down here. They don't want. They don't I want might because I'm a regional resident. Okay, that's right. Yeah. But so that makes me feel better that an ordinance might have less pushback um, from the people that are currently more angry. So this would be a great time to put it in place when we don't think we're, there would be pushback. If we wait until there are three or four or five votes down here, it will be more difficult, mm -hmm. right, to put the ordinance in place. So that's also why we're trying to be proactive and get an ordinance in place sooner rather than later um, before there becomes before it becomes a, a difficult process. Um, there are fishing tournaments, we you know, that are going on throughout the summer. Um, we have spoken to, I know Pat has spoken to, I've spoken to one of the gentlemen. I don't know, is there anybody from the fishing, any of the fishing groups here tonight? Um, but, you know, they have said, you know, it could be a navigational problem. Uh, for the fishing boats, if there are more boats mooring, you know, there's a couple moorings out there now, one boat, um, but a couple of other moorings, um, and if a few more boats popped up out there, that is going to be a problem for 30 fishing boats to get through. We have, as Pat mentioned, there has been boats that have broken off moorings. We've, we've experienced two of them, two of those instances already. Um, I think Pat, you said you went out and to uh, deal with one of them, but you know we didn't know who to call. So there's an environmental hazard mm -hmm. that we're concerned about. Um, and you know, yes, it is our front yards. Um, and I, I said to Eric, you know, we do care about what we're staring at all all day. We don't want to be staring at a marina. That's not what we did invest in. And um, you know, I don't want to be that guy, but um, at the same time. I don't think anybody would love it if, if you know, six cars were parked in your front yard all day and they never came and moved their cars, right? So um, that, that's part of what we're, we're just hoping that that doesn't happen, that we didn't invest in, in, a, in, a, in, in these properties to be looking at what's in Winthrop today. You know, that would be disappointing to us. And then I would just say for the for the enforcement um, and the cost of a harbor master, I would hope that we could think creatively about that. Um, obviously, we would all act as volunteers if we see things. We would be happy to report things to the appropriate people. Um, I also think that we could share the cost of a harbor master. I don't think that cost has to fall totally on Greenfield. Um, uh, to bear that cost when there's other lakes and other towns that are investing in that uh, type of resource. And um, I would also say that we do pay a lot in taxes. Um, and I think that having a portion of our tax dollars go toward that type of a resource would be for the folks that live on the lake and the, and the taxes that are collected from people who live at properties on the lake, would, maybe that would be um, a portion of a of a um, of an officer would be use a good use of a very small portion of those tax dollars. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Regan. We appreciate it. <laughs> Calling out again. Anybody online? And seeing no, we come back live. IRL as they say, and that means in real life. <laughs> Please come on up. Yes, ma'am. You haven't gotten it. We like it when you say your name. You um, I'm Carol Ferrari. I live on the North Shore Drive. Um, I'm a summer resident for the last uh, 30 plus years, and I have seen incredible change in the lake over um, the last 30 years. That's not with, you. <laughs> with regards to boats and um, just change change on the lake, and I and I foresee that to continue to happen with the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lake. Um, so I would say that to be proactive and think about doing some sort of um, mooring recommendations or limits or thoughts on it would be a, a good move for the lake. So being proactive. And again, 
it sounds like um, you're in a situation where it's not a problem, but to see, to look forward and see what's happened in 30 years, you know, it's just going to get, things are going to get busier. So if the town takes a proactive stance in um, determining what's best for the, for the lake environmentally and number of norms would be a good thing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Carol. We appreciate it. Carol, can I just ask one quick question? Are you, are you thinking more broadly or more just specifically to certain areas like the state right. knowledge? More, you're, so you're looking, yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, I'll make that note. Uh, we have an open podium. If anyone else would like to join us, please come on over. Just let us know who you are, Raymond. Really. My name is Rita Bouchard, and we live on, we are uh, summer residents of Lazy Moon. Um, and I can't say that I could address the mooring issue. I'm not sure that I have actually witnessed it other than maybe one event last year across from Central Island, there were two pontoons that were lashed together, but they didn't stay there for long and we just kind of let that go. I am, however, very interested in having much more I, and, and forgive me if there is already education out there that I'm not aware of, but um, we do need something that we can do to when we see boats speeding by. Mm -hmm. And I got little kids in the water and they're being flipped over because of the waves. Um, that's that's a real difficult situation. And in, if that is happening in the land, um, I know that I have um, a friend who's over on the other side of the center island. She said when she um, she was almost flipped over in her her tire, mm -hmm. and when she yelled out and said, "You know, there's a wake zone," and the guy said, "There ain't no such thing," <laughs> and there he goes. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that we're facing. That I would say too, we could money in riffraffing and taking care of our shore, making sure that we don't have the kind of sand and silt. This is not helping us because we are seeing everything. You know, our docks bouncing. Um, there's no one. I mean, you've got an idea. I can't take a picture of a boat that's speeding by that fast. And I don't know if I'm going to call the warden and they're going to respond to this. So I think it is important for refill to take that into consideration because that is getting worse. We've got some weight boats now on our end, and um, you know it's causing problems. So if Harbor Master works, that's great. If if it's not Harbor Master, at least if the town could educate every year and say, okay, we're going to put it in the advertising. Yes, there is weight zone. This is how far you can go. This is what the speed is, and yes. People are encouraged to call in and report boats that are not speeding. Absolutely. So, Thank you, Rita. I appreciate that. I have, can I ask a question? Is that okay? Is that possible? Do you live in Reedfield? I do live in Reedfield, but I don't live in Well, know then go water. for it. Um, <laughs> do, do, so, when I hear this, we talk about the, the community of the lake, right? Certain areas, certain roads, and things like that. Do, do, is there a sense that, that I guess I'm trying to figure out if some of the issues with what I would call irresponsible boating or perhaps, uh, you know, other ways that folks on the lake have changed. Do, do you sense that any of this comes from folks that may be like short term weekly rental type thing? Do, do you know what I mean? Like if somebody's Airbnb being a place on Marana Cook, and I don't, I'm not from Reedfield, I don't know Reedfield, and I don't care about Marana, I just want to come and have a good time. Is that anything that, that you get a sense of that there that, that's more rentals or I, it's just all changing? It just just different ownership. We know that people are buying more property, right? So we assume uh, that there's been more purchase of lakeside property in Reedfield over the past you know two years. And so I'm just trying to, I, you know, and I know a proliferation of what, what these sort of short term rentals, um, I guess what I'm asking is, have we lost some of the heart of the lake community because there are strangers or, or, or short termers? But, but you yes. know, maybe that's my mind. Yeah. 
Oh, who was that? Was that you, Casey? Is that Casey? That is, yes, it was Casey. Um, okay. Yeah, I do think that that's the case. Um, I'm Casey Rogers. I am a summer resident at uh, 166 Old Stage Road and uh, Torsey Pond. And uh, that's something that, and granted, we've, we've, we're one of the newer residents. We've only been up for three years. But um, certainly, even in those three years, uh, like last year and this year, you can tell um you know which houses have weekly rentals and they're definitely party houses and and kind of crazy so and some even bring jet skis which is really fun yeah so. well that's that was just that was a part of the thing you know as we grow and and keep you know increasing capacity how how does a proactive approach to that work I yeah have yeah i have to come to the podium you're gonna come to the podium come on up to the podium i want to see you there you go all right there you go excellent I just want to be able to let Tom Murray more out. Tom Murray, thank you, sir. I'm just trying to keep it. It's on wheels. What about the other lakes in town? Any feedback or anything from them? Um, well, not in terms, I think, I haven't heard anything from like Torsi or, uh, well, Casey, yeah, Casey, uh, in terms of the moorings, I guess the, the yeah, focus no, has kind of been on the state boat launch, certainly tonight with the two set point uh, issue, but I think part of that is really around there. Um, that's where we're kind of focused, it seems like. Yes, sir. Well, the complaint is around man and Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to just let that all go. Not have anything. It's a beautiful lake. Come on up, my friend. Thank you, sir. What is your name? My name is Shelly Gerstein. I live on Just Point Road. Okay. To uh, answer your question. Yes, sir. It, it, it's logical that that would be the case. Um, somebody's renting uh, a house down. Uh, they've got a couple of jet skis. They don't. It's a big deal for them. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody who lives on the lake is not going to just get in a jet ski and go circles and circles and circles <laughs> right. in front of one person's house because they know that's an irritation. Right. They may enjoy using a jet ski, but no. Right. Three minutes here, ten minutes there. People yeah. who are visiting have a different clue. Right. Yes, sir. Um, and yes, sir. so, you know, um, I have um, been the regional representative on the uh, Coppice Watershed District. Mm -hmm. In the past and also on the uh, AM committee. Uh -huh. And it seems to me that this situation may be not something to share with Winthrop because it's maybe just going to be solved by dealing with the launch area, mm -hmm. especially if that could be done by saying no more and therefore not having the expense of inspection. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that's the way it would work. Right, sure. Yeah, I exactly say, speak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That aside, um, it has always worked very well, I think. Uh, I'm not speaking from the point of view of a board member, but the, those of us who live on the lake and got together to do the planning for the dam or even the Coppice Water District, Watershed District, that's many more lakes, mm -hmm. we work very well together. And so you, it, it's most people perceive it as a lake. Especially if they're from a way they don't right. know that it's two towns. So, the if it wasn't if there weren't conflicting rules, that might that might be something you know yes. either behind the scenes or actually cooperating. Even if, if somebody did need to be hired part time, perhaps sharing that expense like we do for the dam. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Burst. Sure, appreciate. It. Oh, Hi, Chris, you're back. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're next. I just, okay. just to uh, answer your, your question, too, just one other yeah. thought. I do think there's been more renting, um, uh, bringing voters in. But I also just notice um, some of the larger boats that have come onto the lake are just people who are putting their boat in, you know, for the day. They're just coming over the land, maybe because of the state investment in making that uh, the parking lot bigger, yeah. the landing nicer, more yeah. people are using it. Sure. So I don't know that there's a lot you can do about that. Right. Right. Um, and obviously, they're more than welcome to come in. But I think it's just people are bringing, they are, we are noticing people are bringing in bigger boats. Mm -hmm. But I, some of the boats, too, you recognize, yeah. like, oh, I saw that one, you know, a couple of times now. And I think they're just coming in for the day to do some voting. So um, there's so there's more of that to the larger boats. You'll forgive me. All I could think of was we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Come on up. Yes, ma'am. I, um, I just had a follow-up comment. Well, I you, think it was Ria's suggestion about education. Before you get on a roll. 
Will you tell us your name? Oh, I'm sorry, Carolyn Moore over at Macy's Cottage Road in the summer. Um, so just following up on Rita's comment and some of the other comments, mm -hmm. it seems that it's beyond worrying. It's about boat safety, it's about water clarity, it's about erosion with some of the bigger boats. Mm -hmm. But one way to um, notify everybody would be everybody gets a tax bill. Mm -hmm. So why couldn't we have a one-page informational sheet mm -hmm. that just gets tucked in with the tax bills that go on? Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't cost the town anymore. Absolutely. To add, yeah. uh, but the town that I'm from, we use our light bills. We have a, a, a municipal light department. Yes, ma'am, understood. And we use that as a source of disseminating things to the town at no cost to the town. It's just one sheet of paper. And we do that when we send our warrant out. So we're familiar oh, okay. with the process. So something like that. And then maybe um, with boat registration, similarly, when somebody has to pay their taxes or the boat registration, they're given the same thing. And then the um, informational flyer also has a request to say you're doing an Airbnb or something like that to post it in the residence so that Absolutely. people who might be coming and going are also aware of it. So just another thought as to how the information might be able to be disseminated mm -hmm. and be helpful to like all of us that we seem to have the same concerns with our opposition. I'm no, just trying to no absolutely. Like yes, ma'am. Um, we are not. We are, we are not. Um, what was the word you used? Uh, opposition? opposition? Yeah. No, you started it at the beginning. You're fine. We're not watching opposition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Opposition to fire. Um, we would actually go up there. You got to talk to the owl. Talk to the owl. You had mentioned owl about about the, about um, the landing and the issues with the landing. I can tell you right now. A couple of weeks ago. Um, you folks received no less than eight boats and trailers from Winthrop because there was no parking anywhere to put the boats in. Um, there was a uh, free hot dog and hamburg issue at the uh, at Allegiant, but the Legion thing that was being held at the point. And there was, of course, all the boats that were already at the point. Then there was a wedding from Silver Oaks and they parked at AMI. And so there was no room there. Um, there was just, and, and in fact, the library, which is very rarely has any cars in it or, or boats and trailers, they were packed. And I know of eight people who brought their boats and trucks down here to Winthrop. And most of them ended up parking on- uh, Do you mean Reedfield? Reedfield on, on I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, <laughs> It's it's a situation where they didn't have any place else to go, so they and these were not going to be these were all people from away. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, come on up. Repeat offender. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I just want to wrap up mm -hmm. some yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> A lot of discussion about things going on along the way, coming full circle back to uh, the morning, you know, consideration. I think it's important to state what it is and what it's not. What we're looking for uh, to be considered is, is not a restriction or moratorium on mornings. <clears throat> what it is, is taking a look at what transpired in Winthrop and saying, we ought to have a plan. Right now we don't. So moorings are welcome in Reedfield by and large is, is what we're saying. We're not saying no mooring, mm -hmm. but we're saying if you're gonna place a mooring in, in Reedfield, here are the guidelines by which they are posted mm -hmm. yes, so that we can maintain safety um, for uh, you know boaters and, and recreational kayakers and so forth, uh, respect people's property and uh, not overload that area. Uh, with with moorings so that we we feel doesn't get in a situation that went through the problem. Yes, absolutely. Great. So I totally understand that. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Can I share? Please do, Catherine. Um, so I'm Catherine Woodson. Um, I live in Kensell on Main Street and I'm on the select board. That's why I get to sit up here with Eric and Dennis. Um, so I'm going to talk to the owl and I know that feels really weird, um, just like it was for you guys, but 
Um, so I have an array of thoughts and I won't, won't rattle on too long. Um, but on the historical side, a hundred plus years ago, this lake was completely different. And someone has talked about, you know, how things have changed over time and over 30 years and so on. I think it's important to, to look at all of our history. We had multiple steamships. You had a railroad that had a turntable um, that used up like 16 acres of land. You had multiple multi-story hotels on the lake. Um, so we had a whole different atmosphere here. And so I really appreciate the, the concern that we have now for how things are changing, but we also need to know that change is inevitable and things will change. And I think what we want to do is try and be um, kind to the environment as well as kind to each other. And so years and years, of, uh, a century ago, it was large hotels. And now it's more private homes that are going to Airbnb weekly rentals. I think we've always had rentals on all of our lakes, um, whether they're for a month or a week, or the family just owns it and never uses it and relatives always use it. Uh, there's all kinds of different situations. And I think the, the thing that has impressed me the most today is the, the thoughts around let's get as much information out there as we can. Every camp or home on the lake should have a poster that's at the door that goes out to the shore. It says, you know, here's what we do in Reedfield. In Maine, there are rules that you have to follow. And please do that because it's kindness to your neighbors. Um, so there's that part. Um, when we had the summer residence meeting, um, I tried to explain that the way the select board over the last, say, 20 years at least, has tried to operate when we think of changing any sort of rules, regulations, putting out new ordinances, is how can we enforce whatever it is that we're suggesting? So for instance, um, when fireworks became legal in Maine, people were like, well, we need to have an ordinance. We don't wanna have fireworks. Well, we wanna have fireworks. Well, we don't, well, we do. And, and how do you decide? Well, the, the biggest problems come on weekends and on holiday times. And the only enforcement we have is either the sheriff or the state police. And they're not going to come because we have an ordinance that says you can't have fireworks in Reedfield. There, there aren't enough of them to do the job they need to do already. Um, and to give them another need, they have told us they can't come for that. Um, and so even though we realize that there are people for and against fireworks in Reedfield, we can't enforce it. So we try to do it with the education and the kindness. And you know, when people have big displays like the camp, is it called KB? Mm -hmm. You know, they get a permit because they have someone come in and set the fireworks off. And so we try to notify neighbors that are nearby. So with the mooring ordinance, that would be one way I think that the select board would be looking at this is what's reasonable to put in place that can be enforced? Or do you even want to put something in place that needs to be enforced? Or is what you want to put in place something that several people have mentioned, which is kind of this is how you're supposed to do it. Let's all work together and do it right. Um, and it is an expense. And, you know, lots of us pay lots in taxes, whether we're on the lake or not. And I really appreciate how much the lake people contribute. And a lot of the lake people, residents, um, are not year round. And so you don't use the other services that you pay for in the town. And, and we on the select board, we understand that. Um, and so if you're looking at this and you're looking at maybe a hundred to $200,000 say to get something started with you know the different equipment, insurance and a salary, how do you split that up between towns? Winthrop has 10 lakes, we have three, Manchester must have at least five. So if you're looking at like 20 lakes and you have one harbor master, is it really gonna be effective? Even if you're splitting the cost, how effective is it? Because, you know, I'm on the lake. I know when you're coming to Reedfield and I'm not going to screw around that 10 minutes that you're floating by my end of my lake. Um, and if you don't enforce it on all the lakes, is that fair? And that's something else that the select board is always looking at is we want to make sure that if we do something, it affects everybody the same way. So we would be, I think we would be less likely to entertain, do something in this location rather than let's do something for all locations because that, that has a fairness test to it. 
Um, what else? I, I believe there are rules and I haven't read them. So I am just going on what I've heard around the, you know, maybe it came from Eric or Chip around the state boat launch, um, right? You can, you, that's state regulated out to some distance. And so no matter what we would come up with for an ordinance, it would not supersede what they already have. So it would only be what's beyond where they are. And I'm sure you can't have moorings. You must know Lee somewhere, but the moorings can't be in the right of way sort of at the state boat launch. They cannot be any closer than 20 feet of the high water mark. Uh, the state has a 200 foot easement, if you will, but you can put the mooring within state waters as long as it doesn't interfere with the fairway, which is boat traffic um, area. And um, it has to be 20 feet from the high water mark on any shore. You know, so I, I think doing a lot of these proactive things, maybe marking things, um, especially just letting people know. And I, I don't know if people really want to get into the neighbor doing neighbor thing. Mm -hmm. um, because that can become uncomfortable, uh, but it's also really highly effective, especially if you people are all in a lake association, you know, when you get together. Well, Catherine Woodson is always out on her jet ski speeding around at 6.30 in the morning, and it's yeah. really annoying. So, you, know, we need, we, we, you know, we really need to go talk to her. Somebody needs to, to speak with me. And, you know, if you don't approach it as, gee, you're a flaming whatever, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, hey, you know, we like to sleep a little later. Could you do this? Maybe, you know, those kinds of approaches I think work really well. So, oh, I know my last point, and here I am rattling on. But it, it, if you haven't read in the KJ, there was a really interesting article about a new thing that's happening. I think it's on Toga's Pond in Augusta, yes, and they have a new ordinance that someone has proposed. And it's going to have all the things that Wendy was talking about in it that, you know, if you have a, a strip of land where 10 houses from across the road all have access and they have moorings, they're not going to be taken out. They're going to grandfather in things that are there, uh, but they have a new state boat launch. And so they're getting more traffic, which is something one of you has mentioned. Um, and, you know, they're trying to be proactive. And what Augusta decided to do with their city council is to take it like a year and work through this. And they want to look at, as you mentioned, several other towns. And they're all pointing to Winthrop and that there are some inherent mistakes maybe that Winthrop made. Um, I think there's some mistakes on the part of the Winthrop town people also because they weren't paying attention as the town council was having meetings and posting things. And then when it came about, they were kind of surprised. Um, and we always have that problem in government is trying to let people know things ahead of time before it's a crisis at your doorstep, get involved. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think we can follow what's happening in Augusta also um, because they're trying to, to make this fair for everybody. Those who, who have already been there, but also protecting that future growth. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if we can learn from some of those other towns and save legal fees, Mm -hmm. um, that's a good thing. I always save some money. <laughs> I would like to say something. Uh, hang on, Lee, do you mind if we get, uh, this is G. Motz. Yes. Hello, yes. G. Motz. My name is George Motzis. I live on Chandler Drive. I've owned uh, for 21 years. First of all, I want to say that I've thoroughly enjoyed the last two years during the pandemic, seeing people take advantage of the waterways because uh, they weren't restricted. So. I think we need to keep access to the lake, first of all. But with respect to the moorings, I don't think we should have moorings near the public boat ramp. I think we want to be careful about that. I think the state probably regulates private ownership moorings in terms of how many you can have per lot. But I think the state has done a great job with our boat ramp. If it was bigger, it'd be better. But Unfortunately, you can't do that, but uh, I'd be against, uh, you know, allowing numerous moorings at that public boat ramp, even though it doesn't directly affect me. That said, I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, George. Um, Lee, I'm going to let you wrap up. I just want to double check and see if anybody else has something to say. Anybody else that wants to speak? Uh, just, I know we got you right here, and then Lee will have you wrap up, but I just want to make sure we keep to the honor of, of the meeting. Um, 
Lee, I'm going to have this gentleman go. He hasn't had a chance. I want to make sure you understand that. Whenever you're ready, you can come on up, sir. Um, just state your name for us so we'll know. Yeah, I'm Doug Thacker. I live over on Cove uh, Road. And quite honestly, I'm here mostly. My wife and I are here just to educate ourselves, find out what this issue is all about. Um, certainly up at Cove Road, uh, we don't have the same issues that are over uh, down by the uh, pier. Um, uh, Kathy, you had mentioned uh, some of the uh, other towns. Well, let me back up a little bit. So on Cove Road, all of the houses, I think there's six or seven houses on that, all have heated right away to the water. And some of the houses, I think there's four, that actually have warrants in the water uh, and they're shared, shared pier. And uh, one of the things that we'd be interested to put out there for consideration if we do go towards an ordinance, whatever, is to either continue to allow that or at least grandfather those that have been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We see what and, and like I said, up to that end of the lake, we don't certainly have the issues that we've, that we've seen down through the uh, here. Thank you, Mr. Thacker. I think it's clear what you were saying. All right. Thank Appreciate you. it. Lee, if you want one last thing to say, I and then. I wanted to say to the yeah. folks on the Okay. Yeah. Um, you folks were complaining about boats speeding along. We have a brand new uh, appointed um, a game warden here, Mayor Tall. And I don't, uh, Eric, do you know uh, his name and contact? I do not. Um, I, I met, I've met him twice. He was very interested in knowing things like that. Did they appoint you on and schedule to? Um, to issues like that. And I'm sure that if, if he was contacted, he would set up his little CDU thing and uh, make a patrol on a Saturday or, or a Sunday or a Friday or Thursday and try to, you know, mediate that type of issue. Uh, we do have, the game one is very good. They, they'll work with you and they work with you. So they're excellent. Um, the only one who can enforce anything on state waters is a game warden. You cannot enforce any ordinance. Neither can a municipal officer, state trooper, or a sheriff enforce any ordinance on the water. Their, their power stops at the high water line. And if you are on a boat and you own that boat, you are the master of that boat. As a master of that boat, you actually have more authority and power than a staff municipal officer at the top of the high water line. It, it's, it may not be right. Uh, and and uh, I, I, I doubt very much it's ever really used, but it is what it is. You have Title 38, which I really urge you to look at uh, and, and study. Uh, and you have Title 25, and that's your enforcement. Um, before, and, and you guys were right. You guys pay an awful lot of money for what we can And and you're entitled. Unfortunately, nobody owns the water. Dennis, thank you, sir. I'm you, all done. You did a good job tonight. Yes, okay. sir. Come on up. Dennis Tom Maloki. Yep. Uh, Tom. I've yep. been on the lake for 50 plus years. I'm a member of the Lake Association. I'm a member of the Obviously, water district for a representative from the uh, town of Reedfield. And I have a keen interest in the lake because I've lived on it and you don't poop where you live. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, there are things enforced, a way of enforcing things. Within the last year, we had a Airbnb with an out of state, out of town voter whose boat became loose and sunk. And we were quite concerned, rather than trying to get Eric out of bed, we immediately called the warden service. Within 24 hours, the warden was down there. He said, Tom, the boat's not, doesn't have a registration on it. It has not been registered for three years and the guy lives in Freiburg. And he said, I know where he lives. And he's going to have a visit from the local uh, game warden. Within 24 hours, the boat was out of there. 
and the water, the uh, gasoline that had had leaked had been contained, and the guy got a fine. There are methods. Game wardens are sure, but they are a good resource. You know, they're not going to come out because you see, you know, Joe Schmo speeding in the area, but they've sat on my beach with binoculars looking for people when I called and said, hey, we got a problem here. So there are resources out there. And I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel in refill. Uh, the towns are dealing with it. And I think we need to take our time. This has been a very cordial meeting. And I think we have good people trying to do good things. And I trust our select board and our town manager uh, and, and the expertise we have in the Cobbacy Water District mm -hmm. to make things work. And um, I thank the town for living in a place where people talk and don't shoot. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Tom. We appreciate it. Um, if there is, if there are no other comments here, nothing online, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of uh, say thank you. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I think this is a great example of us trying to work, work broad, trying to find, find out um, how we can be proactive. I keep hearing that word over and over, and I'm a big fan of that. Um, I think reactive can sometimes get you in a little trouble uh, because you're not prepared to get caught off guard. But just having this conversation with you here, with us able to hear and to take it back to the uh, select board retreat, which is when we sort of talk about what are some of the uh, objectives and goals that we want to create throughout the year, uh, we'll definitely take that to uh, our meeting. Um, if there's nothing else, I would say thank you very much and have a good evening. This meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> ah, that's right. Um, yeah, the public yeah. vote launch for more information is the information about public vote launch is available for the main agriculture, conservation, and forestry department. DACF um, is what that is called. That's where you can find information about what it's all you got.